Hey, this is Steven from The Green Engineers and welcome back to my weekly two weeks or less update video, uh, update video, I guess, format. Uh, this is going to be another 11 and a quarter minute update. Uh, we're back here looking at my custom uh, home built water jet setup. Uh, this is my Julyr, J-U-L-Y-R custom water pump. 30 PSI running a certain size orifice and that's what's actually in this box so we're going to talk about that. This is going to be pretty quick because I'm going to talk about this, not too much to talk about and then I'm going to talk about some other developments on uh, the Green Engineers. So I just got this um, box from Hypotherm which runs a company called AccuStream uh, and AccuStream they make water jet parts. So now this is the remain a few remainder parts that I have. Uh, I have some more on top of this that I'm going to discuss, and we're going to talk about that in a second. So I got three parts uh, for a grand total of five hundred dollars, including shipping. And I'm going to show you what those three parts are. So those are the these here. So here we have the three main parts that are comprised of the main, these are, these are the main two components of the water jet. And then uh, we have the CNC components and then just the routing. And also the code, the code is very uh, important as well. So let me go ahead and get that in view. So let's go over the parts. So here this is the water jet cutter assembly, so this is the, the, the cutting head they call it. And here, underneath these two plastic pieces, we have where the garnet goes in. So there is a just a, a PTFE hose that goes on top of here to your garnet attachment. And then the garnet goes straight inside that hole and will go into this assembly and then catch up with the stream of water and the water will carry it through. So uh, this one has two different attachment, two, two different options here. I don't know why it has two different options. I don't know if they're different, which I don't think they are, uh, so I don't know why they're two different attachments. I might just take this out, which it just unthreads, and then plug that hole. As you can see, there's a hole there. Okay, then uh, there's a hole here for an orifice. So the orifice sits in there, and then here we can see really nice cut threads. This is where your high pressure tubing goes in. Here we have the end that threads on really, really nicely. It's knurled, knurled really, really nicely, and I believe all this is uh, stainless steel. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and show you guys inside of here. So this is where the tip is, and here we have some sort of Loctite. And then in there you can see there's a plastic piece. Now that is the collet and the collet holds on to the tungsten carbide nozzle. So again, this is all stainless steel SST, and I'm gonna show you the uh, rest of the parts. So really, really nice, pretty, uh, very, very nice machining. Um, very, very nice. That was the most expensive part. That right there was about 300. Now we have the tungsten carbide nozzle. Now this is a 20 thou nozzle so here at the end you can see it's got a tiny little hole through it it's big here and it goes down to a tiny little hole if you blow on it it barely has any flow through that nozzle there and if you fill it full of water it barely drips out so this is a tiny little nozzle I think most nozzles are maybe 40, maybe twice as big, two and a half times as big, 40 thou or so uh, hole. This one is um, this one is 20. So I'm gonna I'll have to look that up again. I forgot what all the other ones were, but I think it was um, yeah, it's about uh, 30 plus. So made 30 for a smaller one like uh, the. Um, Proto Max and 40 for other ones. So this is a three inches and this is a 0.3, I think it's about, yeah, this is three inches. This is 0.3 diameter. Okay, now I'll show you the very, very last piece for that and that is the orifice. It's in this tiny little bag. I'll show you that. So here's the orifice, tiny little thing. And actually, if you can see there, it has a ruby on the inside 
And the ruby, you can't, there's no way you're going to be able to actually, you might be able to see it. But uh, there's a tiny little hole in there, in the ruby. And uh, that hole is only five thousandths, so that's two and a half human hairs in diameter. And so that's what establishes the water jet beam. And then when it adds the garnet, and it goes through the um, tungsten carbide nozzle, it could open up a little bit, but uh, what I'm going to have to do on this particular kit is I'm going to have to uh, make the garnet be smaller size. The garnet that I use, the mesh, has to be a smaller size mesh of garnet. So what are the other parts that I need? Number one, I need the uh, CNC controlled table, which I'm probably going to buy from China. Just a cheap 2x2. Two two. Uh, this is not a lot of cutting force. It's not like a mill, so it just needs to be positionally accurate. So have a lot of uh, um, a lot of uh, micro stepping and uh, very very uh, nice precision in the motors and stuff. Other than that, there's not really any left, right, up or down cutting forces uh, relatively to other machines. So pretty much any drawing table would do that. So I'm looking for a durable uh, drawing table, and then just a regular Z slide, just to unlock it, slide it up and down, and to find the distance away from. Uh, the distance away from my material that's optimal. Next part I need is I need somebody to, uh, I, I can't really MIG weld very, I can't TIG weld very well, I can only MIG weld really well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have some SST tubing come off of here. Two of them because again remember this is the this is the outlet on the air side's inlet so here on the outlet it has to come out and then it has to be welded together into one so these both come out as one piece come together, weld as one, and then come out. And then same thing here. We have a hose with our water line coming in, goes into these two, so it comes into one line, the one line branches out to two, and in. So here I need two out, two out and one together, and then here I need one in and then two out to come in here. So I need two manifolds for this guy. Then I need a section of flexible hosing to come off this guy, come up, and then uh, about maybe eight inches, eight to ten inches off the ground, or maybe a few feet, depending on uh, what I could get. The longer it is, the better off I am. So basically, these two tubes are going to come up, and then this nozzle, and then stainless steel is going to go up like this, and then the flexible tube is going to come up, and then come to a come to another one like this, and then this one, this stainless steel is just going to move like this. So basically, the hose is just going to go back and forth. It's not going to kink. It's just going to flex back and forth because these hoses are flexible, quote unquote, but not that flexible. They have like a three to five inch minimum uh, bend radius. So that means if you bent it as hard as you can, it would only make it would make a 10, 10, uh, 10 inch diameter circle, which is pretty big, which is, you know, yeah, big. Anyways, so that's it for this project. That's coming together pretty well. So I wanted to talk about uh, some of the other things. So basically for this I'm going to be finding a welder guy that will want to do that for me and fabricate those and then that part's done. Drawing, then I need a drawing table and then I need the uh, the um, flexible tube. Alright so another thing for this guy uh, I've been looking into trying to get a few of these put together without this machine and then these machine to, this machine to manufacture them uh, after that. So as you know I have a whole bunch of blanks that I made but the blanks, the uh, the center square that's going to have the drive shaft is uh, over tall is uh, not tolerance. So at the um, San Francisco facility, San Francisco uh, uh, the shop dot build, which is a kind of equivalent to the old tech shop, uh, they have a iron worker from Piranha, and it's able to punch giant uh, holes into a thick plate. So I'm going to buy a brooch and then just chase those holes and see if. I'm able to uh, get those out to the people I owe those to, and then that way I could buy myself some time to finish this guy and get this guy into production order. So um, the other thing is I'm working on the multi shooter. I just final I just kind of finalized the parts that are going to be in the spooler module, the the spooler and winder module. I already bought a, a few to make like three three test pieces from China. I bought already bought all the parts. And those are coming, and that's looking really, really good, uh, really, really efficient, and uh, light to ship, so I could get those out to everybody that I owe those modules to, 
and the last of the Kickstarter campaign backers. So that's looking really, really good. Um, that is on Slow Boat, 12 to 20 days, and I ordered that last weekend. So that would be a week ago at this point. So those are going to be coming, and then um, once I have those and I've put together a sub-assembly and I can show you guys it running, that's what I'm going to do. The next thing you guys are probably going to see is either, uh, if that doesn't happen, that, 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 that'll that happen within the next two weeks. It should here be here within the next two weeks, and I should take a week for me to do that. Uh, next few videos that you'll see is you'll see that spooler assembly. You'll see um, the cutouts of the uh, EcoBase. 3D printer, you might see an update on this guy, and you might see a tour of the shop.build. So a whole bunch of things happening right now. Also, again, at school, my project uh, with my group of six, I'm working on the second version of the multi-shooter uh, for international consumption, and uh, we might have uh, maybe an update on that as well. All right, so that's pretty much it. A uh, pretty condensed update video. I will see you guys again in two weeks for more information. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more updates, guys, and uh, keep in touch, and I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. Peace.